Great day, great day, great day, great day. And welcome to the Mental Fortitude Using Self-Care to Conquer Life's Challenges session. My name is Dr. Shannon Harrington, and I'm super excited to be with you here today to share a little bit about my story and to develop a little bit more of our mental toughness. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. So I need you to help me with my presentation. So I don't want this to be just a presentation. I want this to be a conversation. Okay. So I need you to repeat after me. Let's get warmed up a little bit. Let's get warmed up. Let's get this Apple Watch together and let's get warmed up. So I want you to repeat after me. I'm going to say mental fortitude. You say mental fortitude. I say, is my birth that right? You say, is my birth right? I say self-care is, you say self-care is my superpower. My superpower. You got it? You got it? I think you can do it. I think you can do it. So let's stand up if you have to. I know we virtually, but we can still interact virtually, right? So mental fortitude is my birthright. Self-care is my superpower. Okay, that was real cute. That was real cute. I know you kind of said it like you just woke up. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I need you to say it like you mean it. Say it with your chest, as my, as my mentor says. Say it with your chest. <laughs> mental fortitude is my birthright. Self-care is my superpower. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you all the way in Virginia Beach, Virginia, where I am. So I heard you. You can go ahead and sit down if you stood up and say it with your chest. <laughs> you can have a seat and we'll get started. So circa 2012 is when I became doctor. May 2012, actually, is when I became doctor. Got to say it. You got to say it with a little... Woo! With a little dance, right? Dr. Shannon Harrington. But although that was one of the highlights of my life, it was a big year in my life, it was a lot going on in my life. So I remember one day I was driving home from work. I was cute. I was cute because you know how us women, I'm talking to the women, men might be able to relate as well. We have this superwoman syndrome where we can get up, we can go ahead and get the curls curling, the nap snapping or whatever, you know, and the fro fro in or the, the weave weaving. We can go ahead and beat the face to the gods. We can carry our little Louis pocketbook. We can put on our little whatever, our DKNY. <laughs> we can put on the heels. We can put on the little skirt. We can smile. We can put on the red lipstick. You know, it's, 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 it's a different type of day. When you put on the red lipstick, you feel it some type of way. When you put on the red earrings, the red earrings and the red lipstick, okay? So we can look the part, right? I remember driving down the street in my new car, my little Louie over to the side. And I was driving home from an extraordinary job. I was a professor at the university. <laughs> but I was a hot flaming mess on the inside i remember driving down the street and every time i say this it's like i relive it so if i start crying y'all just act like i'm still cute and i'm not ugly crying it's okay it's gonna be all right somebody just pray for me i'm at the faith conference so i know i got some some of my aunties that's just gonna pray for me and give me a virtual hug later but i remember driving down the street i was on my way to my amazing condo not too far from the beach, in my cute little new car, with my Louis Vuitton in the passenger seat, coming from my six-figure job, getting ready to become Dr. Harrington. But I was depressed. What the makeup covered up, what my mask covered up was a depression. What my mask covered up was the fact that I was so unhappy in my marriage. What the mask covered up is that I was so unfulfilled in my relationships. What the mask covered up was the fact that I was, even though I came to work every day and I smiled and I was a professor and I poured into the next generation of nurses, I didn't understand who I was, whose I was, or where I was. And I remember driving down the street, I just started crying and crying and crying. And I told God, Jesus, if you don't take the wheel literally and figuratively in my life, 
I'm going to drive right off this bridge and end it all. And I remember God saying to me in that moment, I got you. I got you. And from that moment on, the next 11 months were hell. However, I knew every day as I was going through hell, I had some heaven moments, but it was 11, 11 months of total hell. Even though I was in one of the darkest seasons of my life, I had the most peace that I've ever had. So I don't know if your story is like mine. I don't know if you're unhappy in your marriage. I don't know if you're unhealthy in your body. I don't know if you got a new job that's driving you crazy <laughs> or you met all of your goals. Sometimes success feels like failure or once you accomplished it all, you wonder what's next. I had major self-esteem issues. I had major communication challenges and issues and within myself that were rooted in a lot of things that kept building and building and building on top of each other. So that was February, 2012. Then I become Dr. Harrington. But as I'm becoming Dr. Harrington, I'm being separated from my husband. So I'm going through a divorce. And then the day that I move out, my father has a stroke. And 12 hours before graduation, when I'm supposed to be all excited about my next step in my academic career, the pinnacle of my academic career, I am standing at the side of the ICU bed watching my father take his last breath. A few months after that, my grandfather dies. A few months after that, my grandmother dies. All of this happened within the span of 11 months. So while I was going through hell in 2012, I realized the importance of self-care. And I love this definition by Purdue University that says self-care is any deliberate, meaning intentional activity that we do in an effort to provide for our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. And we're going to unpack that because I don't know what your story is. I don't know what your heaviness is. I don't know what the weight of your life is in this season, but I do know what can help you drop the weight physically, emotionally, financially. And it all starts with you. Maybe you look like this woman. Maybe you look like this man. If you look or feel like either one of them, you you, let me get all up in the, the camera. You, my sister, you, my brother, need self-care. So why is self-care important? Why? We just gonna get an overview. Why is it important? Helps to reduce stress. So y'all still stress. I still feel the heaviness of my story. <laughs> and it's my story, but I'm on the other side of it, praise the Lord. So I hope all my praying aunties <laughs> still praying for me. <laughs> because self-care is your superpower and your mental fortitude is your what? Birthright. Making sure y'all still awake and y'all sticking with me. So self-care helps to reduce stress. It helps to improve your immune system. You get less sick less often. You are more productive at work and your job is gonna be so happy because you are hitting all the goals and all the outcomes. It helps to increase your self-esteem, your, self your focus, as well as improve those relationships. So self-care to me was a three-part journey that I'm going to share with you guys. So my first step was self-awareness. I'm going to talk to you about when did I learn it and what that really means to me. Self-discovery is going to be about what I did. And then I'm going to talk to you about self-mastery, how I keep doing it. So self-care to me is three parts, self-aware, self-discovery, self-mastery. So self-awareness, this cute little girl over in the picture, that's me. That's me before I started wearing red, lips, red lipstick and being all Roman things, right? So that's me when I was five years old. At five, I had, whoo, I'm not even going to tell that story because I'm still recovering from the last stories. So you you just going to have to read my book or one of my books. I got four books, shameless plug. Um, You'll learn about one of them in a minute, but 
I have four books and it talks to you all about my childhood and the deep, deep, real, real, not the highlight real version, not the Instagram worthy version, but the ugly, not the R-E-E-L, but the R-E-A-L <laughs> version of my story. So get one of the books and you'll find out more. But at five, I had a lot to heal from. I had a lot of childhood traumas. I had a lot of emotional issues. So one of the things in my path and my journey to self-discover, self-awareness, sorry, was therapy. And you know how every time you go lay on somebody's couch, the first thing they want to ask you is what? Tell me a little bit about your childhood. <laughs> Everything got to start when I'm three. <laughs> and I realized that Everything starts when we three because everything starts when we three. It's a lot of things that happen to us. Like I just shared with you a traumatic 11 months and I didn't even give you the, some parts of it. I'm just like, oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. It must not have been meant for me to share that part. Get the book. You can read all of it. But I shared what I felt led to share. And that was a lot. That was heavy to go through in 11 months. Every time you stand up, you get knocked back down. Every time you get up, you get knocked back down. Every time you get knocked up, you get up. It's just this tug of war with life. But as I went through therapy, it helped me to become self-aware and to understand. I told you I had lost myself in 2012. I didn't know who I was and whose I was. But therapy with a Christian African-American woman helped me to rediscover and to re-acknowledge who I was and whose I was and stand in the mirror, totally naked, not all the time, but emotionally naked, stripped of all the titles. You're not doctor, you're not professor, you're not business owner, you're not speaker, you're not author, stripped of all the titles, standing naked in the mirror. Who was I and who was that little girl? that was standing up inside of me, and what did she need? So my journey of self-awareness, even in 2012 and 2013, because I evolve and I'm a new woman every day because I'm intentional about my growth. I'm intentional about my next. I'm intentional about becoming the best version of myself, but it started with me becoming aware of what I was going, what I was going through, who I was, whose I was, and what I needed in that season, and giving myself permission to provide myself with those things that I needed unapologetically. So these are a couple of other self-care tips that'll help you in your journey to self-awareness. So choose one. But the one that I wanted to unpack for you today was therapy. My journey of self-discovery. Faith and fitness saved my life. So if you just had to know like, okay, what's Dr. Shannon's story? Faith and fitness saved her life. And I'm trying to stay on time and my thing keeps going out. <laughs> Faith and fitness saved my life, period. Period, as a kid say, and period. <laughs> Faith and fitness saved my life. So I had a lot of insecurities about my size and my weight. We always, listen, the weight loss roller coaster, I can tell you how to gain it. And through my business, because I'm a certified personal trainer, I can tell you how to lose it. But don't ask me. We're not going to talk about it. It ain't your business. How many times I've gained and lost 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. We ain't going to talk about that. We ain't going to talk about that. But in my journey of self-awareness, I, I discovered self-awareness and self-discovery. <laughs> Self-aware that the problem, that I had a problem and that I was a problem. Then I discovered that I was an emotional eater. So because I was an emotional eater, and it's me, like, Ain't nobody putting food in my mouth. Nobody is making me do anything or not do anything. It's when it comes to exercising. But I learned my, I learned a lot through the struggle of getting consistent with exercise. I learned my, I developed my strength in that struggle. And that's one thing that I love to do in my business is I help other people to discover their strength in that struggle. Because being consistent with exercise, sometimes working out ain't working out. Let's just be honest. Sometimes working out is just not working out. <laughs> and we have to really, you're not always going to be motivated every day to do it. You're going to have to have that accountability. But you're, once you start working out, once you start seeing your body change and feeling those changes in your body, 
you're going to feel so much better. You're going to look so much better. Your laps are going to be so much better. And in that struggle, you're going to birth your strength and you're going to discover really how strong you are and how strong you can be in the journey of becoming. So my journey of self-discovery exercise was my number one thing. And exercise, once I started getting, it was like, I don't know whether it was spiritual fitness, physical fitness, mental fitness, all of them kind of went together for me. As I got more spiritually strong, it helped me to get more mentally strong. And that mental toughness helped me to be consistent with my physical strength and development, if that makes any sense. Because some people, it's just like, okay, well, I started getting physically fit. And then that helped me to get my mind right. And then once I got my mind right, I got my spirit right. It don't matter which order you choose. All that matters is that you develop that mental fortitude and you know, you know that you know that you know that you know that it is your birthright to have it. And you don't stop until you get it. So this girl right here is a boss. Her look green. Her look green. She cute. She cute. Um, in my journey of self-awareness that led to self-discovery, I'm in that season of self-mastery now because I'm consistent and persistent and intentional about infusing self-care into my daily life. And it is in the four W's. War room. Y'all, if y'all seen the movie, you know what war room is. But war room, workout, worship, work. So let me unpack that for y'all. War room. If you've seen the movie, you know that's prayer time with God. That's your devotional time. That's you just being soaked in his presence. Not just so much talking. Not so much you talking, but you listening to. You listening to. At first, it was just me. Oh, God, let me go through my devotion. Blah, blah, blah. First, it was to check the box. And then it became something that I realized that I couldn't live without. Or I didn't feel right if I didn't do it. Like, if I just get up and I'm like all frazzled and running from here, running there <laughs> all day. and like, Why am I so off? I didn't have my devotional time today. So you stop, refocus. But War Room is how I start every day. When I open my eyes, I open my eyes, I open my eyes. <laughs> okay, Jesus. What's the word for the day? What's the devotional for the day? Okay. War Room. Workout. Some days is more crazy than others. So if you follow me on social media, any, any social media platform, and my website is Dr. Fit Nurse, D R F I T N U R S E. <laughs> Dr. Fit Nurse. So don't judge me by my workouts because people be like, Dr. Shannon, I watch your workouts and I burn calories just walking, watching your videos. So I do work out most days, probably six days a week. And if I'm not working out, then I'm doing some yoga, I'm doing some stretching. My body moves. Like we get up and we should be grateful to God for the activity of our limbs because it's a lot of people who can't move. Some people who were able to move yesterday got in an accident and paralyzed today, right? So it is just a blessing to be able to open up our eyes, to be able to um, have the activity of our limbs and to be able to move our body. So working out or moving my body is a part of my daily routine. Erda. So war room workout worship. Worship, sometimes it's listening to the praise this remix <laughs> of money. If, if you ain't seen the movie, go see the movie on Peacock. But sometimes it's a little ratchet worship. Sometimes it's the Tasha Cobb's ugly praise. Sometimes it's the William Dot McDowell. <laughs> Sometimes it's a Kurt Franklin. Sometimes it's a thought Cherry. No, no, no. Everything. No, 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 no. <laughs> so it just, whatever, however the spirit moves me, it's worship time. Worship time um, is normally some type of animated something experience where I just enjoy being in God's presence. Whether it's a little, some days it's just like, I can't do nothing but this. And some days it's no, 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 everything, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, depends on the day. Worship. Last one is work. So I don't work literally every day. I'm talking about self care. Why? How are you going to work every day? 25, 8. <laughs> Tell us about self care. Get your life. Stop to share it. I don't work every day. However, work, I do work most days because I have a corporate job and I have a business. So we work around here. But my definition of work beyond corporate and entrepreneurship is me flowing in my purpose. Sometimes it's me just smiling at somebody. Sometimes it's me giving $5, $10 to the homeless person at the light. Sometimes it's me paying for somebody's groceries in Walmart or Target. 
sometimes it's just me making extra time to reach out to someone who I haven't talked to or heard from in a while. It doesn't always have to be reciprocal where you trade dollars for hours for dollars or um, doing a business transaction. It doesn't always have to be that type of work. But work is just me flowing in my purpose and allowing God to use me that day. So in my journey of self-mastery, I have incorporated self-care practices into my daily life, ballroom, workout, worship, work. And as I continue to master myself and I'm on this journey and evolution of becoming, I affirm myself. I have to stand in the mirror or look in my phone in the camera and say, girl. Use a bad mama jam up, right? So sometimes I say I'm strong. Sometimes I say I'm powerful. I'm beautiful. I'm wealthy. I'm rich. I'm whole. I'm healed. Whatever it is, I affirm myself. That keeps me on that journey. That keeps me consistent, knowing who I am and what I need to be doing to show up as my best self in the world today, being a reflection of God and being his hands and feet on earth. So the peace of God that surpasses, I know y'all know Philippians 4 and 7, ain't it just, whoo, in this picture, it's just a vibe, right? But the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guards our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. And for me, I told y'all, faith and fitness saved my life. 2012 was just a one one hundredth of the drama and trauma that has been my life, Jesus, however. I know that in order for me to continue to show up, to continue to evolve, to continue to be a reflection of God, I know that I have to know that mental fortitude is my what? Birthright. Self-care is my what? Superpower. And the peace of God, even in those stormy times, no matter what storm it is that you're going through, God got the rain jacket for it. God got the off switch for it. So let's even just take it there. God can protect you in it or God can deliver you out of it. Or God can deliver you in it. Sometimes we want to escape the storms. I didn't want to be going through a divorce. I didn't want to have suicidal ideations. I didn't want to feel like I wasn't sexy or I wasn't beautiful. I didn't want to feel like I didn't know what my purpose was. But that's my truth. That is my truth. But I didn't real build real estate in those negative emotions. I took that season in stride and I told y'all, no matter what happened to me in that year, as bad and as heavy as it was when God told me he had me, that peace that surpassed all understanding became my reality, became my fortitude, became my fortress. And that's what I want for you today. Because the next year, the next year, I gave birth to my baby, Trigan Health and Fitness LLC. And guess what Tri stand for? Your girl had the audacity to put the Lord in the name of the business and the book. Okay. <laughs> Tri stands for transform and renew yourself. And what scripture is that? Some aunties on the line. What scripture is that? Being transformed by the renewing of your mind? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let's go and say it. Let's go and say it. I know y'all keep dying to say it. I beseech ye. <laughs> what version we say? I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable what? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the flies. <laughs> by the renewing of your mind that it may prove what is that what and what and perfect will of God. Thank y'all for reciting that with me virtually. Appreciate it. But I, my baby, my business was birthed out of my pain because I struggled with self-esteem, because I struggled with my weight loss journey. However God was going to deliver me and help me to get at whatever he was going to help me out of, I was going to make it my purpose, my life's work to help somebody to get through what God brought me through. So I challenge you today, whatever, I hope that you didn't sit here for 25 minutes, 24 minutes, 30 minutes or whatever, and just waste your time. I hope it's something that you can take from this message that not only blesses you, 
that you can apply today, but you can share with somebody else. Help transform somebody else's life. Try again in your fitness, in your spiritual journey, in your emotional journey, no matter what it is that you're going through right now, have the faith and know, stand up, stand up, stand up. I got to make sure y'all remember what we learned. That mental fortitude is your what? Birthright. And self-care is your what? Superpower. Now I need you to say it. Say it like you believe. Say it with your chest. Mental fortitude, mental toughness, mental strength. It's your birthright. You deserve it. You deserve it. And self-care is your superpower that's going to help you with that mental fortitude. My name is Dr. Shannon Harrington, and I am so grateful for the opportunity to have shared with you today. I pray that something I said bless you, and I pray that you bless somebody else with the information that I use to bless you. Have an awesome and amazing day.